What's happening, folks? Welcome back. It's time for your Twitter reactions to Celtic 1, Aberdeen 0 at Celtic Park. Before we get started tonight, I have to tell you about our sponsors, One Football. The One Football app is the best football app on the planet. You can get lineup notifications as soon as the teams are announced on match days. You can get pre match stats. You can get goal alerts, league tables from all around the world. You can add widgets to your home screen to keep up with Celtic's next fixture, who it's against, what the kickoff time is, all that sort of stuff. And you can get all the Celtic related news sent straight to your phone as soon as it breaks. You can download the app by clicking the link in the description of this video. It's free wherever you get your apps on your phone, and it's a great way for you to support the channel. So if you haven't downloaded it already, please do get involved and let me know what you think. We'll start tonight with Patrick Murphy. Reading that some fans were very impressed, really. First half was decent. Then the second half, we allowed Aberdeen to come back into it. Wasted a few chances at the end and looked suspect with balls into the box. But hey-ho, it's a victory. I thought today we started the game after the first five minutes where the stream wasn't working and Aberdeen had a couple of good chances. I think Considine hit the bar and then... Ash Taylor produced a good save for Scott Bain. We grew into the game. Edward gets the goal, deflected albeit. But I thought some of the movement was good. We were clearly building attacks a little bit differently. Scott Brown was coming deep and splitting the centre half like we've seen under Rodgers. Um, maybe a little bit more patient with the ball, but I thought there was a, a little bit more energy in our attacking movement at times. But aye, it did drop off in the second half and it was reminiscent of the game 10 days ago. Very, very similar. Um I think the second half may be a bit more scrappy today than it was last week, but just we really struggled to get a foothold and that movement and the, the attacks that we built in the first half, it just didn't come together in the second half at all. And Aberdeen did come back into it. And a few shaky moments, no real glaring chances um, for Aberdeen. A couple of scrimmages bouncing about the box and maybe one sort of headed away off the line, but um, they weren't carving as open, but we did still look... Um, suspect with balls coming into the box and Aberdeen are going to do that to you, I said before the game almost half of their goals, 47% have come for set pieces you see with the long throws into the box they're a big side, got a lot of height, they're always going to do that to you, um, at the end of the day we managed to hold out and it is a, it is a victory Lenny McBride, still too slow and deliberate, it's all very well passing back to keep possession but it's predictable and teams know how to press Need Forrest back to run at full backs and get crosses in, a huge miss Aye, James Forrest has been a huge miss this season there's no doubt we've lacked width for the majority of this season. We don't really have much at all. El Yunusi, who isn't an out-and-out -out winger, um, he's more of like an inside forward, playing in for the left-hand side, and Mikey Johnson's been out. Other than that, we've got nothing, so that's why we've played with these narrow formations and we've relied on the fullbacks for width all season. I do think we were a bit more patient in the build-up today, and the thing about that is when you have the energy and you have good movement in the attacking third, it, it works well, and there was some really good link-up, particularly down the left-hand side in the first half between Laxalt, McGregor and Edward. Some really nice one-twos with Edward and Laxalt, which is probably a first since Laxalt came to the club. Nothing really on the end of them, some good low crosses into the box, but again, other than Clamalla's one for John Joe Kenny's low cross that he really should have scored. Um, nothing clear-cut on the end of them. But I agree that in the second half, it maybe was a bit too slow and we just couldn't get any rhythm in the game. I think Aberdeen didn't have much rhythm either. As I say, it was a really bitty, scrappy game in the second half. Um, and the chances we did get at the end, we should have been a lot more ruthless with. There's no doubt about that. Um, at the downturn, first half excellent, second half poor. Eddie's so selfish right now, continually losing possession, trying to skin player after player. I, I agree with that. I think Edward was good at times in the game today. As I say, in the first half, he linked up really well down the left-hand side. He was drifting out to the left-hand side a lot, coming in, um, dribbling at defenders outside the box, trying to cut in. That's what he's good at. But there is times where he's receiving the ball already inside the box, and he's just trying to take too many touches. He's trying to beat too many players instead of just getting out of his feet and trying to find a shot. And I'm not, I'm not one of those people who demands that a football player shoots as soon as he gets the chance. But it's just overkill with Edward just now. Um, he's trying to dribble past far too many players. And the chance right at the end sums it up. He's got Sorrow who's made a long burst and run uh, down the outside of him. He could just have played in. Now Sorrow's <laughs> sitting midfielder. He's a number six. He's not an out-and-out -out goal scorer. So he might not have scored it. But I think it was a much better option than trying to cut back inside the defender. And then I think his shot ends up getting blocked. He doesn't even really get a, a proper finish away. So... That was really poor, and it was selfish. There's there's no getting away for that. Um, we should have been more ruthless with those chances, as I said earlier. Stacey Devlin, 
First half and Ayer, the only positives in that game. Second half performance, we dropped off very poorly. Aberdeen came into the game, another game over and a step closer to the league finishing and towards the rebuild for next season, we move on. Simple. Aye, that's just what we've got to do. I, I talked to the guys in the, the full-time reaction about the expectations for the rest of this season. It's really hard to say. Um, I mean, obviously, the main goal is to prevent Rangers from winning the league at Celtic Park. That's how low this season's <laughs> um, got. That's all we've really got left. We've got to stop Rangers from going unbeaten in the two games we've got against them. Um, and we've got to ensure that they don't win the title at Celtic Park. Other than that, it's dead rubbers. It's dead rubbers. There's no... This isn't a bedding in period for a new manager. There's going to be a lot of change in the summer. Hopefully a director of football, a new head coach, some of the big players leaving. I think the Celtic team at the first day of next season is going to look a lot different to how it is now. So it's not like this time is really useful. Um, it is just dead rubbers and it seems like we're just in no man's land just now and, and that's just how it is, that's how the season has, has played out to this point um, we'll finish with David Kostrick Kennedy seemed to want to play out from the back just like Rogers did but we still don't win enough headers and never seemed comfortable I, as I say I think there was some things to like in that first half John Kennedy's only worked with the players two days um, I'm not expecting radical changes uh, I'm not expecting everything to be ripped up and, and start again and certainly not in the space of two days I didn't expect wholesale changes to the team we didn't get that we only got two um, Klamala up front maybe a surprise and I thought he struggled in the game uh, Patrick Klamala that chance is his real big opportunity um, to really put his fingerprint on the game but he missed it and listen I know we don't seem comfortable with balls into the box that's been symptomatic of our whole season we did manage to cling on. Um, I think it was less clinging on than, than seeing it out today. We were clinging on 10 days ago against Aberdeen, but that last couple of minutes, we were having the chances and, and we should have maybe have finished it for 2-0 in the end. But aye, it wasn't the most comfortable of games. The second half performance did dip for where we were in the first half. And listen, I know that a lot of people are fed up with it and a lot of people are uninspired and, and they're not getting a lot of joy for watching a performance like that. But it is where we are. Um, and hopefully we've only got the game against Dundee United now before the derby hopefully we can maybe see one or two changes to the team again from today maybe Griffiths back in uh, some sort of partnership with Edward and building towards as I say that derby towards the end of March that's a big game for us we've got to go and win that we've got to get something um, something of a consolation for this season because we haven't won a big game all season and if that game is to prevent Rangers winning the title at Celtic Park then it's a must-win game, an absolute must-win game. That's it for tonight. Like the video, comment your own thoughts below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next week for the build-up to Dundee United. Cheers.